January 22nd, St. Vincent Pelodi, Confessor, Third Order. This unpretentious man, who out of respect for God omnipresent, always went bareheaded, is one of the glories of the Catholic clergy, the pillars of the church in troublesome times, and the successful apostles of the people. He was born in Rome in 1795. From earliest childhood, he evinced tender love for the Blessed Mother of God, and the decree on the heroic nature of his virtues emphasizes the following facts. He possessed an exceptional love for poverty and penance, and was therefore especially devoted to St. Francis of Assisi. Because various obstacles were in the way of his entering the First Order, he desired at least to belong to the Third Order, it was his constant endeavor to imitate and venerate St. Francis. Vincent became a tertiary in the Franciscan Church of Araceli on November 29, 1816. He distinguished himself not only by his piety, but also by his brilliant intellect. In time, he received the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and of Theology. He was overwhelmed with joy when on May 16, 1818, he was ordained to the Holy Priesthood. Then his apostolate began. With prayer and penance, with his labors in the pulpit and the confessional, with his efforts on behalf of the sick and the endangered, and especially on behalf of young clerics in the Roman seminary, he did a measureless amount of good. To his apostolic zeal must be ascribed the foundation of the pious society of the missions, also called the Palatine Fathers. The purpose of the society was to arouse faith and charity among Catholics and to propagate these virtues among our separated brethren and non-Christians. Vincent placed his organization under the protection of the Immaculate Mother of God and under the perfect submission to the Holy See. God glorified his humble servant by the gift of miracles, both during his lifetime and after his death in 1850. He was comparatively young when he was called to eternity, but in that short span he had accumulated a wealth of merits. He was beatified in 1950 and canonized in 1963. On Enlightenment. False enlightenment is destructive. False enlightenment is doing even greater havoc today than in the time of St. Vincent. The aim today to, is to eliminate religion from public life. The oft-repeated cry is, take politics away from the church. But what they really mean is, take religion out of politics. Yet there is the voice of the Almighty addressing the world. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19.32 God's religion must not be excluded from any phase of life not from politics either. To do so is to bring harm on the world and on the nations. Do you allow yourself to be deceived in this matter? True enlightenment brings blessing in its train. True enlightenment, for which St. Vincent toiled, is nothing but the correct knowledge of things and their purposes. But it is only by faith and by grace that we can arrive at this correct knowledge fully. And Christ is the teacher of the faith. He has said, He that follows me walks not in darkness. John 8.12 Remain firm, therefore, with heart and mind in your adherence to Christ and his church, to Pope and Bishop. False enlightenment is foolish. The so-called enlightened class of our day despise faith and divine revelation and 
told as right and true only what they can comprehend with their puny intellect. They act like a person who will heavily curtain the windows of his home so that no ray of sunshine can penetrate, and then lights an oil lamp in the belief that he can trust only the light of his own lamp. To such a one may be applied the severe judgment. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Romans 120. Be on your guard not to follow these foolish, deluded, and conceited people. Prayer of the Church. We beseech thee, O Lord, give ear to our prayer and enlighten the darkness of our minds by the grace of thy visitation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Vincent Pallotti, pray for us.